Now that you've read The Sirens, Scylla, and Charybdis, we're going to work on an activity that, uh, first of all, has you answer a question about Odysseus's point of view, and then has you compare and contrast his point of view to a different point of view from a poem. So the question, or the question you're supposed to do after reading is, that, or answer after reading, is while you read Odysseus's version of the story, you highlighted the vivid descriptions and imagery that Homer used to depict his point of view. Based on what he described, how did Odysseus portray his experience sailing past the sirens? Was it easy for him and his men? Was it difficult? Did he act bravely or did he act weak? Did What were the sirens like from his perspective? So using your own words, describe Odysseus's perspective of his encounter with the sirens. You can change these words a little bit if you want, but basically you can start with something like Odysseus describes his encounter with the sirens as, and then you'll answer that question. So describe what that encounter was like for him from his point of view. Then you're going to take a different point of view. And basically you are going to read Odysseus's perspective, or you already read Odysseus's perspective of his encounter with the sirens. Now, poet Margaret Atwood created a different portrayal of the mythical creatures. So you're gonna read Atwood's poem below and look for the details that portray the sirens' point of view. From their point of view, what is it like when they encounter men like Odysseus who sail towards their island? So the contrast is between Odysseus's point of view and the siren's point of view. I've divided the poem into three parts, and those three parts are also known as shifts. Each part has a different tone, meaning that there are three different tone shifts during the poem. So there are, there are shifts in tones during the poem. On the left-hand column, this part in blue, you're going to highlight words that contribute to the tone. In the right column, the purple column, you're going to identify the tone and explain what the siren is saying about her encounter with the men. Basically be observing what is she doing? Is she describing something? Is she convincing someone? Is she establishing something? I want you to try to identify what is going on in each section. And it will be a little tricky, which is one of the reasons I wanted to read it out loud to you so that you can maybe, uh, it might help you identify the tone a little bit and help you explain what the siren is saying about her encounter with the men. So when it says siren song, the perspective is from the siren's perspective. And I, you know, this poem is not very easy, but it's also not very difficult. What makes it difficult for most students instead of easy for most students is because they don't think about the implied meaning or the connotation that's going on. So Really, there's a couple of correct answers to this poem, and I want you to do your best at really digging deep and trying to figure out what is happening so that when you get to this part and you identify the tone and explain what she's saying, that you really can try to identify what's actually going on in that section. So let me read the poem to you. It's very short. So there's section one, here's section two, and there's section three. Here it goes. This is the one song everyone would like to learn the song that is irresistible, the song that forces men to leap overboard in squadrons even though they see the beached skull, the song nobody knows because anyone who has heard it is dead and the others can't remember. Shall I tell you a secret? And if I do, will you let me get me out of this bird suit? I don't enjoy it here squatting on this island looking picturesque and mythical with these two feathery maniacs I don't enjoy singing this trio, fatal and valuable. I will tell the secret to you, to you, only to you. Come closer. This song is a cry for help. Help me. Only you, only you can. You are unique. At last. Alas, it's a boring song, but it works every time. Okay, so really be thinking about in this first part, what is she trying to do in this first section? What is she trying to establish and help you to see? Here, what is she trying to do? You know, go back to these questions where it says, is she describing something? Is she doing something? Is she convincing someone? Is she establishing some kind something for the person, the listener? Really try to identify what's happening in each section. And you might want to reread it a couple of times and listen to me read it a couple of times. That might help. Okay, the last thing you're going to do once you um, answer everything on the right is you're going to write a five to eight sentence response in which you discuss the overall meaning of the poem. In your response, please include answers to the following questions. 
How does the speaker feel about being a siren? Does that seem to change throughout the poem? And if so, when and how does that change? What does this poem seem to reveal about the sirens? In other words, how does it depict them? What happens in the last stanza of the poem and how is the ending of the poem ironic? In today's world, we sometimes see beautiful seductive women described as sirens. What does this suggest? So here's where you're going to write that paragraph. Remember, I'm looking for five to eight sentence response. Then you'll go on to reading the story of this, the cattle of the sun god, but that will be a different, a, a different screencast. Have a good day and um, do your best. I really am very curious to see um, all the creative thinking that you do in order to contribute or to, um, to finish this assignment.